Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we have the American Blade Works Model 1 Version 6 here. Now, I really, really like this knife quite a bit, but I did run into some issues. So we'll get into that here in a second. The ergos on this thing is fantastic. I really, really like the ergos on this. Um, it's a neutral grip while having a handle design that I really like because it goes from thinner to thicker. Um, yes, it gets a little thinner, but where my finger lands, like I, I get really good leverage and it's very comfortable to me. I, I do really enjoy it. Yes, I feel the clip a little bit, but it's not bad. It, it's, it's perfectly acceptable. The jimping lands in a good spot. Now, there's a lot, I can tell there's a lot of handwork done on this. And these are very affordable for a USA made knife. So, um, I picked this up on the secondary for um, just under 200 bucks. And I think that uh, is a fantastic deal for a USA made knife like this, especially with so much hand finishing work. The stone wash on the blade is really nice. It's like a heavy, heavy stone wash. The micarta is different. Um, this reminds me of like some some of the custom knives I've tried. Um, they're they're micarta. It does have like a coating over it or something that, you know, where it's not like this. If you look at this knife, how the micarta like this one's more uh, polished and has you know. Um, I don't know, like a slicker texture, like even though, but there is, you can see there's, there is texturing on it, but it does have more of a polished finish to it. Now the blade steals S35 VN. We have a titanium clip, titanium backspacer, and I'll get into the liners here in a second, but the cutting performance I really like that I can get up here on this choil like this for the push cuts because this grip right here going through materials is very nice. I have so much leverage into the to, into the cuts. And even if I'm back here, it's really nice. But cutting performance is really good. The geometry is decent on it. Mine measured about 20 thousandths behind the edge. It's pretty much a full flat grind. Not quite a full flat, but it's it's close enough. And it does cut pretty good. It's not a very tall blade. And it is kind of in that happy medium range between very slicey and hard use. So I'm happy with that. Um, full size knife. I love the blade shape. Tip is nice and strong while still being acute enough for utility cuts. But the slicing performance is really good. I'm happy with it. Um, I did sharpen it. We'll get into that in a second. But yeah, cutting is really good on it. I brought it to work a few times. And the utility cuts, like I said, um, aiming down with the cuts is really good. It, it's really comfortable in the hand for those cuts. So um, yeah, I, I do really like the, the cutting performance, the ergos, the leverage, all of that. Now let's talk about the action. So... You can see we have a little cutout here, and you can see the liner has a nice little chamfer on that edge. We're going to talk more about that here in a second, but you can get to it pretty easily. Drop on it's pretty smooth. Detent is nice and strong. Now, if you look, it has jimping right there that is pretty grippy. Nice, strong detent. It flies out there really fast. And the drop on it's pretty smooth. We're also going to talk about that here in a second. But it's not false shut action or nothing. But it is, you know, with just a little bit of shaking, relatively drop shutty. It's very smooth. And with if I encourage it just one good time, it'll slap all the way shut. Detent right there pretty early because I can get the flipper tab past it. Now, the clip, the clip and carry. <clears throat> Carry's really good, nice and slim in the pocket, nice and light. Um, the clip works great in and out of the pocket, over the seam, very nice. I'm very happy with how the clip works in and out of the pocket. And, you know, it sits relatively deep. Not, not too much hangs out of the pocket. Now, I do kind of wish that this was, like, chamfered, like, an, at an angle right here. 
Um, let me see if I can find another clip that does that. Kind of like this. How you see how this goes at an angle right there. That would be nice on this because this is, is a corner right there and when it's in your hand, you know, I can feel it. It's not bad though. Let me just say it. it's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad or anything like that, but it'd be nice if it was like that. Not a lot of movement or anything. I could force it, but it, it's pretty sturdy, especially locking down the screw. So I'm happy with all that. Um, now let's talk about sharpening it. So Putting it on the stone, sharpened up really good. No issues with that. The edge came out really sharp. It wasn't the sharpest um, when I got it, but like I said, I did get a secondary. I do really like the plunge grind. They did a good job on it. The grind is slightly off a little bit right here. It's a little thicker on this side than it is on this side. But it's, that's not that big of a deal. I'm not even worried about that whatsoever. And like I said, I do like the sharpening choil because the plunge grind has done very well. They did leave me quite a bit to sharpen. So very happy with that. And I can always add uh, another sharpening choil in if I want to, but I don't think I'll have to. And I like that I can put my finger there. There are a lot of good things. This thing looks like a knife I would love. Um, so yeah. You know, on the stone, the steel felt really good. It uh, took a very, very sharp medium edge. Um, I didn't attempt to polish it at all because it's S35VN. So I just stuck with around a medium grit like I usually do. And it looks really good if it'll focus. Now, let's uh, let's talk about some of these negative things. So, one thing, um, I really wanted this knife because it's a titanium liner lock. Was a titanium liner, liner lock. So, it was a titanium liner lock knife, and it had my look to it. It had a lot of things to it. And I was possibly going to buy it to, to actually gift it to somebody. But, regardless, um, when I got it, it had some play in the pivot and i knew that when i bought it so i bought it knowing that i just want to say that right off the bat i checked it tested it when i got it it was originally coming for review the owner um you know gave me an offer if i wanted to buy it and i bought it knowing the thing because i knew i could send it in i had confidence that i could send it in and get it dealt with if it bothered me now it wasn't lock rock because I could literally push the, the liner over as tight as possible and it never went away. It has something to do in the pivot. Anyways, whatever it was, it was rocking and it just would not go away no matter what. So I sent it in and, you know, I talked to, um, American Blade Works and, uh, he said, yeah, you know, um, you know, we, uh, take our integrity seriously and send it in, you know, and, you know, he wanted to make sure I was happy with it. So, well, when I sent it in, I got a message back saying that he, you know, fixed the issue and that he put some steel liners in there. So he said that it was 17-4 stainless, a very high-end stainless. And, you know, he said it cost him three times more to make. Um, he switched the new ones or he switched, I don't know if it was just this one or all the new ones or whatever, to the stainless because, um, so it can be a hardened liner and it weighs the same, but it'll be, be much better basically over time and everything else. Um, now, you know, I didn't like that. Uh, I, you know, I, I told him that, you know, I bought it because it was a titanium liner and, you know, that's why I really liked it, yada, yada. But, you know, ultimately, I trust the maker more than myself with that. It just was a down, you know, it, it, it was a plus to me for it to be a titanium liner lock. I really wanted a USA made titanium liner lock. Um, and maybe that's just me uh, because, you know, maybe it is, you know, just the, I don't know the word for it, but maybe it's just, you know, like the you know the fad going around you know like that uh a titanium liner lock is better than a steel liner lock i don't know 
but it, regardless, the point was is that I really wanted a titanium liner lock. Now, but I trusted him. I said, okay, whatever. You know, it was already done, right? It was already done. I kind of wish he would have asked me, you know, like, you know, if I would prefer that. But I guess he's switching them all to that or something. I don't know. Regardless, I trusted him. Okay, whatever. So I get it back. And um, when I get it back, it has some issues. It had stick. I haven't contacted him um because I'm going to explain why I didn't contact him here in a second. But when I got it, it had a pretty bad lock stick, wasn't centered, and it didn't lock up about 30% of the time. So when I would open up hard like that, literally I would get severe lock rock. Like I would go like this and the lock would just go K -k 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 -k. like it would just go like this. It'd go wham, wham, wham. Like it would just disengage basically. Then if I went like this very slow, which this is actually still happening. Um, but if I open it up really slow and check for the, the lock face geometry, sorry, it got blurry. But if I go really slow, see how early the lockup is. If I mess with it, it will see it. I'll just do it really lightly because I don't want to mess up my lock face, but you can see it shaking there. I can obviously fail it. Um, but that's only if I go really slow um, now. So I thought about it like maybe there was, I couldn't imagine him sending it to me like that. Um, you know, not being centered, um, not locking up all the way, hey, you know, I, you know, maybe he just opened it up once and checked it and it was good because a majority of the time, yeah, if I just opened it up like that, it would be solid. But if I open it up hard, it wouldn't. And if I open it up soft, it wouldn't, I had to like be like just a perfect flip and then it would lock up good. So I started thinking maybe because man, it is ridiculous ridiculously hot here right now the humidity here right now is insane i i can't even express to you how ridiculous it is i don't even know what it is it's probably like 80 percent humidity 95 degrees i don't know but anyways the point is, is i thought possibly some expansion even though it's in my house but maybe through the travels in the the trucks you know because those trucks get boiling hot inside there maybe some stuff expanded and they threw it out of whack a little bit so i took it apart and also this was another thing this was the whole time it had like a like when i go like this like it still has it a little bit but it was loud like it was like <laughs> like it just seemed like it was rough um, on the inside of the pivot and it wasn't smooth. Um, not that it seemed stiff or anything, but it was stiff. Like it felt like the bearings were almost like crushed in there trying to roll, but couldn't even when I went like this really soft, I'd feel dink, 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 dink. And then it'd be smooth. And then like, it felt very, very gritty. And it was loud when I went like this, like it'd be very, it was very loud. Right now, you can kind of hear it. Let me get my mic in, but it's not as bad as it was. Now, that is not even nowhere near like what it was. Now, so I took it apart. And I just took it apart, and then I switched the bearings out. Okay, so I took it apart. Um, came apart pretty easily. It's a T15 pivot. T7 body screws on the inside. There, it, also, it had st uh, steel bearings. Sorry, steel caged bearings, ceramic bearings, but in a steel cage. Okay, so they're ceramic balls, but the cage is steel. So I decided I'm going to switch them out. I'm going to throw some Gillian bearings in there just to see if it smooths out the pivot at all. Uh, the pivot looked, you know, nice and smooth and everything, but maybe it would help. So, and I had some Gillian bearings that would fit just fine. So I put those in there. And put it back together, you know, after letting it open up, you know, taking it apart, kind of letting the parts, um, you know, sit for a second, put them back together. They all lined up really good. Everything went back together. And upon putting it back together, a lot of things fixed itself. Um, the majority of things fixed itself. There still is, you know, the one issue. Uh, now, 
when I open it, doesn't matter how hard or soft I open it, if I just deploy it, it locks up very solid. The only time I have issues is if I slowly open it up like this, which to me is kind of important because let me show you what it should, in my opinion, what it should look like. Now, I'm not trying to make it seem like, I don't even like showing other knives like how something's better or anything because I don't think that's appropriate, but I'm just trying to show like lock face geometry when you open up really slow, how it drops right in place. Now, that, you know, obviously this one changes, you know, depending on how hard I open it up. Now, if somebody asked me or somebody told me they had that issue, I would literally just tell them, well, keep using it, right? Use it, open it up. And that's what I've been doing. And the smoothness from the bearings is far better. I mean, it's way more drop shutty, way more smoother. The sound of the pivot is only like a quarter of what it was. The lockup is a lot better. I'm not saying that's from the bearings. I'm saying that's from taking it apart and putting it back together. The centering is close, not perfect, but it is it's so much closer than what it was because it was like, like this when I got it. And I couldn't imagine like that he sent it to me like that, but you know, um, like I said, after I took it apart and put it back together, it seemed like everything else, you know, pretty much worked itself out. So maybe something did expand during the, the, the trip in the, them 200 degree boxes they get shipped in, you know, in shipping. So, but I don't know. Um, I do have a couple issues still though. Um, not, not that significant. And I will say I'm quite a bit happier with it than originally when I first opened it. Um, but the liner though, you know, like the liners, you know, they have a rough look to them, which is fine. I know there's a lot of hand finishing work done. We got this chamfer right there. I actually kind of like the way that looks with the gold and then the silver chamfer from where he chamfered it. It's pretty comfortable to unlock. The action is a lot better after I put these gillians in there. Um, it does have internal stop pins. Um, what else? Um. I do get a little stick sometimes, but it's like 98% gone because it was bad. Like it was pretty bad. Like it was like, you could hear it and feel it pretty good. Now, I, like now it's like, let me show you guys. Now it's not bad. Ooh, I was smacking stuff. It's very, very light, and I'm sure it will go away over the next few days of flipping it and using it. I hope. I hope it does. Um, because it is a steel liner, so, you know, the stick isn't from titanium on steel. The stick is from, you know, just tension, I guess. But like I said, it's not horrible. Now, now, um, I'm a lot happier with it now, I guess. Um, I don't have the one issue, but I still have that in the back of my head. Like, you know, is it going to, because of that lock face geometry, but I'm guessing it's going to be fine now. Um, it is very solid all directions. I like the knife a lot. Like I said, this is a knife that I, I do like quite a bit and you know, it is working itself out. So I'm pretty happy. I'm a little disappointed that it's not titanium liners, but if he's switching them all to that because it's just better, um, I think the only problem is, is that that to me personally, not to, to other people, but to me personally, it was that that was kind of a selling point. You know, I, I you know, a titanium liner locked USA made knife and that's 35 VN micarta for, you know, around the $200 mark. I think that's an incredible value, especially with the hand finishing work. But after thinking I might have to send it back again, you know, I was just like, man, I, I should just try to take care of this myself because if I, if, we, if I keep going back and forth, you know, I felt like it was a good deal for what I bought it for. You know, it was, you know, pretty, it was close to, I did get a good deal on this, by the way, the guy that sold it to me, gave it to me for a good deal. No doubt about it. I'm happy with the purchase. I am not. I'm very happy with my purchase. I just want to say that right now. But if I keep shipping it back and forth, you know, the price is just going up higher because um, I'm paying for the shipping. Um, I wish these were T8s 
but they're T7s, not that big of a deal. I do like that it's a T15 pivot. I do like a lot of little details. Like I said, I love that this choil is the way it is. I love this plunge grind. Um, the font is pretty cool. The micarta is really nice. I don't have any other micarta like this. Um, the liners don't really match. Like the, I mean, I guess they do. They match the micarta now. So, And then other little details like the finishing work around here. The jimping looks like it's hand done. Um, which, you know, I appreciate. I like that it's got a, um, a D-shaped pivot with his logo right there. That's pretty cool. The stone washing is really nice. So... A lot of good things. I'll let you guys know how it goes in the future. If it does wind up giving me some issues, I'll let you guys know. If it only gets better, you guys will know. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.